Khan Meditations. What do you think of the whole Giza power plant theory? I believe it. So, can you explain the basics of what it is? So, if you realize, if you look at the, if you do a rewind on the geological clock of Giza, you find out that the Nile ran right up next to the pyramids. Okay, so after their last war, that's why that's why Giza is nothing but sand. Mm -hmm. That's the remnants of an ancient war. That's why some of the sand has balls of glass in it. That's three thousand degrees temperature. That's vitrified uh, sand mm -hmm. turned to glass. But anyway, so the Nile used to run right up to the pyramids. Now, underneath the pyramid, we know that's true because we see the dried out aquifer uh, areas where there's these gigantic um, uh, shafts that run, not man-made, but natural forming uh, areas underneath the pyramid where the water would run. Now, when you take magnetized crystal granite, which is the base, and you use running water underneath it, you create physiostatic electricity. Then the granite will pull the ions up into the pyramid send them up the grand gallery. Now the grand gallery has these slots on each side where the hypothesis by engineers, mainstream engineers too, is that they could have been resonating rods, something to amp up, step up the electricity as it went up into the King's chamber in the King's chamber. Here's what's interesting. There's a box in there that they try to say it's a sarcophagus. It's not a sarcophagus. I'm six foot. I'm just going to stop that right there. Billy Carson is 100% right. There is a large granite box or it's some kind of, stone material that's very hard and it's very precise and it's actually so precise that you can't even stick a, a one human hair in between the crevices and the cracks i mean this is insane i mean i've seen videos where people try and say oh well you can actually do this and that on granite you can't break it no you cannot get it this precise if there is anybody that can get granite that precise please come to me i'll give you a million dollars because that that's just impossible there's a box in there that they try to say it's a sarcophagus. It's not a sarcophagus. I'm six foot four. I can't fit in that box. Sarcophagus, when you go to the museum, you see what a real sarcophagus is. These things are massive. Not this little tiny box. The box is the exact dimensions, though, of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant used to sit inside of that box. It was technology. It was a capacitor. And that would then give the extra boost and send the electricity up through the apex where there was a gold capstone. The obelisk, which are crystal, magnetized crystal granite, would capture that ambient wireless electricity and then pass it on to what they call jed pillars. D-J-E-D. -E these jeds. They had these jeds. They're depicted in many hieroglyphs. People holding them and connecting them to light bulbs and electroplating devices in hieroglyphs, which I took everybody to go see. Pause one second. What What, what did you say was inside the, the box? The Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant? If you look into biblical text, for example, mm -hmm. there was this Ark that Moses stole. All right? He took, he had this box. He claimed it was given to him by God, but I think he stole it from the Egyptians. That's why they fled after him. An Ark. Yeah, so it's this box with these cherubims on it, but these cherubims are really, a, it's really a capacitor. This It generates a lot of electricity. Inside of this box is something that has so much radiation. That's what it looks like there. That you had to have on specific type of clothing, which is well described even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Rubber boots, gloves, this type of suit with this breastplate of metal on it. To This is all to prevent the radiation poisoning. When somebody didn't have it on in the Bible and they touched the ark, they would become very sick. Their hair would fall out. Their nose would bleed. Their eyes would bleed. Their fingernails would fall off. Radiation sickness. This thing was generating some type of radiation power, some type of... a uh, a generator of, of power of some sort. Um, and it was connected to the Great Pyramid. It was in that box. Evidence for this, for me, that box has a gigantic piece of the granite missing off one corner, like an explosion happened from inside the box. Mm -hmm. If you look across the Grand Gallery, uh, I'm sorry, across the King's Chamber, there's a wall about maybe 30 feet away. The impact from that giant piece of granite that snapped off, it cut that granite on the wall, the exact shape of that corner piece. Wow. Something explosive happened there. For you to throw a piece of granite that heavy that far and impact that way. So there was energy in there. Now, if you go back to the story of Moses, it really was Pharaoh Akhenaten. Moses is not the real name. That's the made-up name. Pharaoh Akhenaten, who was ushering in monotheism in Egypt while he was a pharaoh, worshiping Amen-Ra, the great Amen. Amen-Ra was one of these Anunnaki people who said, look, from now on, there'll be no other God but me. That made it into the Bible. When you say thanks, you give, you say thanks to me, you say amen. That made it into the Bible. Teach the people only to worship me, not any of my other relatives. 
I'm the only one and true God. And he began to do that. Then he made an order to go de start defacing all the hieroglyphs and all of these statues around Egypt. That's why the noses and the ears are chipped off. That's why the faces are chipped off everywhere you go. Bodies are chipped away. It wasn't done. The hypothesis on the streets is that it was done because white people back then didn't want black people to know that there were black people in Egypt. That's actually false. The true reality is this was done in ancient times and it was carried on by Coptic Christians long before Jesus was even born. They were still following that same monotheistic religion. And to them, it was offensive to have these faces of all these gods around because it's only one true and only one God, the great Amen. And that's why all these things were done. Hmm. But Moses, when he was kicked out, so they said, look, this guy has to go. We got to get him out of here. They kicked him out of Egypt. They kicked the Pharaoh out of Egypt. He went and he took that ark out of the Great Pyramid and he fled with his new followers. They weren't slaves. They were followers of Akhenaten. They crossed the... So this is why I like Billy Carson, because he's going to break down the true story of what actually happened. He does deep dives in this research, and he can truly tell you and relate, like how I said it in a previous video, you have to read between the lines. Mm -hmm. Billy Carson is one of the best people that I've ever witnessed at reading between the lines and and truly getting to the real truth and what's going on in these stories. It's just so interesting. And I, I love watching them. This is the most abundantly inf informative video that I've seen in a while. So let's continue to watch it. And, and this is just mind blowing stuff right here. The Sea of Reeds, not the Red Sea, which they tell you in the Bible. Nobody ever crossed the Red Sea. It's a mistranslation by accident on purpose. They crossed a much smaller, much easier to cross sea called the Red Sea, which is also in the same region. And then when the Pharaoh realized the power source of Egypt had been stolen, the new Pharaoh, they sent the, you know, sent the chariots after him and everything else. His son was uh, left behind. He didn't want to go. That's Tutankhamun. But Tutankhamun, they started worrying that maybe when he got a little older, he would say, I want revenge for my father. And so they decided to kill him and kill his, his, his girlfriend. And that's how the story ended that way. But anyway, that's what happened. So what was the purpose of this powerful arc like what what was it used for like what how are they used they use these pyramids as giant power structures yeah. and the, this arc was like the the reactor or like something a reactor right so what were they what were they doing well, in the desert when they had it out in the desert it would give them power it would give them power to power something called the mana machine and the mana machine would generate this food for the the masses of people that followed him out into the desert and so it had this capability of generating food also when they had were out there, they saw enemies. Or enemies were trying to attack them. I don't know who these enemies. It never clearly says who they were, or why they were were attacking. But they would then use this thing as a weapon. It would send a beam out and kill these people. So this is technology, and that's in the Bible. Wow, that's fascinating. It's right? not magic. It's not a sky daddy with a magic wand. It's like real hardcore tech that was used, and they recreated this at a university in America. Using the exact instructions that are in the Bible. Really? What university created this? Uh, Google it. I can't remember the name of the university, but do you, Professor recreates the Ark, or uh, you can look it up. Uh, several people actually have done it as well, too, since then. It, created, it generated so much power, he had to shut it down. It was pulling power from everywhere. Yeah. Crazy huh. stuff. From the exact instructions. And he made one. The engineer who said the Ark of the Covenant... This is a, a, group of college, a group of college students made a replica of the Ark. That's one. Uh, there's quite a few now, but there's one that was a while back where uh, replicas. Yeah, they made, you know, just recreating it from the, uh, you know, from the actual uh, instructions. One of the, as many, there was a few Arks. It wasn't just one. One of them mm. was discovered at, in Ethiopia at an Ethiopian church about nine years ago. And someone who did a documentary on it claimed it was there. And uh, and then right afterward, within a year, it was stolen from the church. They didn't have the military or security or anything like that. And somebody came and mm. just took it. Uh, so it's gone. That one's gone. But there's there's others. Um, but I'm pretty sure if you go on videos, you'll find there's videos of this stuff being turned on and everything else. I love this kind of video because you get to hear someone who's truly knowledgeable and, and actually does the work and the research to truly find this stuff out. I mean, Kelly and I were talking and she was saying there's a lot of stuff in Ethiopia there truly is, and we're probably going to do a video breakdown on that or find a, a great video to react to that explains it. But there actually is a lot of 
ancient um, technology and, and ancient artifacts in Ethiopia. And these people were aware. But I, like I said earlier, I just love the way he breaks it down and, and talks about it because the Ark of the Covenant truly was a source that generated power. And like you said, hair would fall out. People would get sick. I mean, radiation poisoning 101. I mean, that's what's going on here. You had to have a special suit to carry it. It had to be in a special box. That's why these walls are so thick in this granite. And it's just so interesting and cool to actually see someone that's knowledgeable that can truly break it down in that way. And um, I'm looking forward to see what he comes up with next because all his stuff is, is truly wonderful. So, Yeah, Billy Carson is definitely a wealth of knowledge. And when he talks about stuff like this, it's just inspiring. It makes me want to go out and research more and gain more knowledge. But that was a crazy story. I'm super mind boggled. Not to mention I'm surprised because, you know, I grew up Christian, but I never heard of that box. So. Yeah, that's surprising that you never heard of the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, I know. you've never seen Indiana Jones? Yeah, but. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, baby. I mean, it's about finding the <laughs> Ark of the Covenant. That's where all of this stuff really comes from. That's like the prize for a lot of people. And even the people in Ethiopia who are said to be guarding that. Yeah. Um, ancient relic a lot of people think the ark of the covenant is in there or one of the arcs of the covenant but like Willie carson said it you know one of them was stolen so we don't wow. really know what happened and what's going on but it's just very very cool and it's a very cool time where a lot of this ancient knowledge is being uncovered by us and so we're going to need you guys to do your research we're dropping a new video every single day like subscribe turn on your no notification bell and uh, comment in the comments guys let us know what you want to react to. We're going to, we follow your instructions. You guys are the ones that are in charge of our channel. Essentially we do whatever you guys are interested in seeing. So thank you for watching and uh, yeah, come back tomorrow for more. Thank you.